At the end of this video, you will have a better understanding of observation and reflection in early childhood education and will be able to confidently answer the following questions. What does observation entail in early childhood education? Why is observation important in this setting and what roles do practitioners play as it relates to observation? We will also look at a scenario that resulted from lack of observation and give solutions to the problem. Finally, we will analyze three observation techniques that were used during our practicum experience that helped with observation of children, classroom environment and parent-teacher interactions. Observation is more than watching children. It entails, among other things, careful attention to details in the environment, blending into the environment, observing with knowledge of child development in mind, and documentation. In the childhood setting, observation entails looking at each child's unique personality. Thus, the observer has to focus on the holistic development of the child, which is social, physical, and spiritual and cultural. Another aspect of the observer is the observation of the gross motor skills which include the entire body movement. This entails strength exercises such as but not limited to running, jumping, climbing and hopping. Additionally, observation encompasses fine motor skills involving hand-eye coordination and to the developments of the fine manipulation skills. Observation is important in the early childhood setting because teaching and learning are an intrinsic aspect to our responsibility and our claim to make a difference globally within and outside of the classroom. Go 2015 reported that the importance of teacher learning is to contribute to the idea of teacher-parent partnership by insisting that parents support relevant information on children. Observational techniques relate to what is not limited to brainstorming, questioning and discussion. To me, observation is very important because as practitioners, we gain a wealth of information and insight on the children in our classrooms. Now with this information, we are better prepared to plan and meet specific individual needs of these children. Also, observation is important in identifying issues, in tracking our children's progress, and above all, in understanding our children. Through observation, we are able to understand their likes and dislikes, their interests, their strengths and weaknesses, their motivations, their learning preferences, and of course, their family background. And these are all important factors in determining how much a child develops and learns. So it is obviously very, very important for us as practitioners to do all that we can to observe our children observe what they like to do, observe them individually, observe them in whole group settings, observe the classroom environment, and of course, observe the interactions between the child and their families. Research shows that an important role of practitioners is that of sharing findings with parents. Also, practitioners have the important role of documenting and assessing their students. Rankin 2009 suggests that observation plays a critical role for practitioners in early childhood setting. Through observation and assessment, practitioners are able to communicate with parents of their children's developmental progress. Recording such information can be useful in determining a child's readiness to progress to another level of learning. In this scenario, the students were given an activity to indicate greater than and less than. 
Prior to this, the teacher used various methods to engage their understanding, including the use of the right-hand bench to indicate greater than and the use of the left-hand bench to indicate less than. After this, the teacher gave homework. Based on the homework results, the teacher understood that the children did not grasp the concept. In addition, there are 18 children in this class, one of which I consider to have special needs and four of which do not know the difference between left hand and right hand. In order to resolve this problem, the layout of the classroom should be that of grouping, for example having students in small groups of four or five according to their needs. In grouping children, those who are considered below average would be seated closer to the teacher to get more attention. For the children, secondly, the teacher could have used the store of the alligator to create the of the signs for for the children to make the signs and cue cards with each sign written on their individual after the concept is Here are the observation techniques we use during our practicum experience. Event sampling. I decided to use event sampling method and this is because it is more specific to an individual child or the children's progress. In event sampling, it gives concrete evidence of children's progress throughout time. It's not just a one-off level of observation. It is ongoing and it involves taking specific notes and documentation of the children's work in order to assess their progress. Anecdotal recording. In order to really observe the classroom environment, I decided to use the narrative method of observation. In fact, like the name suggests, it was as though I was writing a story. This method of observation is sometimes called the long observation, and that's because it involves observing children over an extended period of time. I sat in the classroom for about 30 to 45 minutes and observed children in small groups individually and the classroom as a whole as they were engaged in different activities. At the end of the observation period, I was able to gain insight on the teacher's interaction with the children, the children's interests, their strengths and weaknesses, and of course, how the classroom environment impacted the way in which they were learning. Anecdotal recording. setting it is observed that not many parents or family members are available to interact with the teachers of these children on a day-to-day -day basis. More often than not, in my practicum experience, of the 18 students, I saw the family members of five on average over the two-week period. As the interactions were observed, I used the method of jottings to record occurrences. Jottings is a method of recording observed behavior according to Lorena, 2015, is a quick and easy way of recording short details of significant events, behaviors, and conversations, usually a short paragraph or a few sentences. Sing Hey,